Well, uh, thank you both for taking the time. I really appreciate it. I couldn't get downtown. So this is the next best thing. And I, I really appreciate your time today. Um, guys, this movie was so moving. I absolutely loved it. Uh, Clay, I do want to start with you because, um, you know, we have seen you in so many things over the years. I don't, is this your first Canadian feature? Because I think it might be. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. How did that all come come about for you? Um, you know, the, one of the producers, Tom Spriggs, um, who he was actually an assistant to my manager um, many years ago. But Tom always had such great instincts as it relates to material that I would found myself just gravitating towards him when we would get a script sent. I was always curious what his thoughts were on the material. I just thought he had a great barometer. Um, and then, of course, he's moved on and, you know, doing so many wonderful things. So when he reached out and said, hey, I want you to take a look at this. That immediately piqued my interest, again, just because I value his opinion. Yeah. Um, and then to find out that they were talking to Aiden Young, who, you know, he and I did Rectify together. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, you know, uh, exciting to kind of think of uh, of us having an opportunity to work together again in a different capacity. Um, but honestly, it was a combination of reading this material, which seemed so fresh and, you know, in a world where we're all so inundated with content, it's difficult to find something that's unique. Um, and I just thought this had, again, such a fresh take on on a world that I was just very unfamiliar with. And then to yeah. see the photographs from Newfoundland, yeah. I knew if we could capture that in the frame, that we would have something really special. And then Obviously, I had concerns thinking about, you know, a child kind of carrying this film and who that actor would be. Um, and when I saw this young lady's audition tape, mm -hmm. I uh, I was hooked. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Now, Alex, you know, look, you're already an old veteran. I mean, this is not your first TIFF. You know, you got to give Clayne a few lessons here. This is his <laughs> but, you know, look, I saw you in, in The Good Nurse. I mean, you get to... You've worked with some great people, but, uh, you know, Jessica Chastain, Eddie Redmayne, and now you've got Clayne to work with and this great cast, Francis Fisher. I mean, seriously, but I wanted to know from you, uh, Alex, um, there's a lot of pressure on you, as Clayne just said, this this uh, character, Isla. She, there's a lot of pressure on her, not just you, her. I mean, my goodness. What was your reaction to reading that script and thinking like, wow, there's there's a lot going on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the script was written so beautifully, but I was definitely a little bit nervous because this would be my big lead lead. Um, but I was also really excited to see the challenges and how I would play out this amazing role. Yeah, what challenges did you, did you incur, do you think? I mean, was it script? Was it just getting into her head thinking like, wow, every I'm a character that everybody depends on in this little remote town. Um, you know, that's a lot on her shoulders. Yeah, um, I think it was definitely the magical aspect and all of those, the powers that I have. I thought it would be really interesting to play that without all the special effects and everything um i thought it would be a good challenge oh uh, yeah well you you pulled it up i have to say uh claim <laughs> you know when you started to uh work with this young lady um you know uh, you never know you never know when you have a co-star or romantic lead you never know when you're working with somebody who's playing your child what really impressed you about her well you're right you know sometimes you show up on set and if you're unable to kind of create that relationship, um, you know, the camera kind of sees the soul of everything, doesn't it? Sometimes the camera sees what the human eye doesn't see. Um, and a lot of times it can play really well in rehearsal and then you get on set and there just isn't that chemistry that allows the audience to truly be immersed in the world. Um, you know, this young lady is, she's grounded as a human being. And a lot of times she almost kind of moves in slow motion um, because, again, of her feet are so well planted on the ground mm. uh, that things will happen. And she just kind of takes it all in stride. And let's be honest, the camera loves that sort of thing. Right. So I knew immediately that we would be 
truly grounded in the scene itself. Uh, but then what was impressive is how she would come to work with ideas and that she wasn't afraid to uh, kind of express herself as it relates to the material and where she thought that her character was going and how she saw the scene. And that's what you have to have. You can't come to work timid, right? You got to be willing to come in. You have to have strong opinions and ideas and know that you can possibly, it might not work. We're going to fail, but we're going to, we're going to keep moving forward um, and always challenge not only one another, but the material and the environment. Um, and I had that with this, with this young lady, you know, and, and it, um, it just made the work really easy and it allowed us to have fun. And, yeah. and you don't say that very often. We, we, she, she's such a pro as it relates to coming in, understanding the material and knowing her lines. So that once we're put into the scene, into the practical environment, it, it was just, let's explore it. And how do we, how do we make it the best that it can be? Yeah. Well, I mean, teamwork. We all... We all did it as a team. We all put in our put in our team our our respect and our kindness. We all put in put in the work and really made it a fun and safe space. It was family too, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I felt like you know if I had my kid up there, she had her parents, and we were all just kind of in this small little community with zero distractions. Right. So we were eating together. We were we were sitting by campfires together. We were going to all the beautiful uh, sites and hikes and the things that wow. we do in, in Newfoundland. But we were doing it together while we were always working on the material. So it, it did become it was like uh, we formed our own little tribe. And that was that was special. Yeah, I was going to ask that because you are working on this remote little island, you know, that really is away from everybody and it but but again, Newfoundland is so gorgeous. Um, you know, and that you were able to establish those characters and become closer that way as as a team like Offset as well. I think that's amazing to have that well, opportunity. The camera sees it, right? And the yeah. audience feels that when it's authentic. Um and then of course, Aiden and I have an old relationship and he's such a pro. Right. And then Francis was like mama bear <laughs> and she came in and just, you know what I'll say about this film. And I've worked on jobs where ego was the driving factor. Mm. It didn't exist on this project. Yeah. There was no one that was bigger than the baby, no pun intended. Right. But there was no one that was bigger than the project itself. And how right. do we all make it great? And that was whether it relates to Christian's vision from a, an aesthetic perspective, because it's, it's a beautiful film, how it's shot. Yes. None of that got in the way of how do we make this the best from scene to scene? How do we make it the very best? And again, no one's ego ever got in the way of that. And that to me is just, right? That's Yeah. That we yeah. Really you can't ask for anything more. Um, you know, Alex, like I said, I don't want to give too much away because as, as the movie goes on, you learn a lot of stuff. But, you know, I like I said, Isla has a lot of pressure on her. Um, you as a young girl, you know, doing what you do or having to go to school and, and, and get all this, everything at the same time done, acting, school, every, um, family responsibilities. Ha, has there ever been, ever been so much pressure put on your shoulders that you were like, I can't do this? <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely had some points where I do need a bit of a break, but yeah. everybody needs breaks. Everybody needs some time off and some chances to, to just hang out with your family or friends um yeah yeah oh good well good good I'm glad it sounds like you have a good head on your shoulders it's good to hear that I'm glad uh we, we have to go back about uh to talk about Francis Fisher my god okay boy did I ever hate her character in this I'm sorry like uh, we'll get to the oh. I think everybody in this town just was desperate to cling to something obviously uh but as the grant truth or grant so I'm sorry, I didn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I was not happy with her, but I mean, clearly she did such a great performance. What was it like to work with her? She's such a veteran. <laughs> She's such a vet, but again, and you know, you've you've how many actors have you met and worked with? And a lot of times they think very highly of themselves, right? And the individuals in their lives uh, have, have have done nothing to deflate that, right? They only elevate that that perception. And um, I just, I don't think I've ever 
I just fell in love with her from the moment I met her. And I felt like I had known her forever. Um, and and that's not just a reflection of her great performance that she's give, given in the past in some of these iconic films and roles that she's done. She's just a lovely lady. And at this point in her career, still, all she cares about is getting the scene right. Nice. She just wants to make sure that the dialogue works and the movement is the choreography all in place. And she's such a pro that we were all, and again, she became mama bear in the sense that she had Thanksgiving at her house. Um, and anytime we were doing big meals, she always would want people to come there. And I mean, she was making cookies for people on set. She would, when people started to get, because, you know, the conditions were a little rough at times and yeah. people started to get, you know, a little cold or not feeling up to par. She would make these incredible homemade soups that she would bring from the vegetables she would collect from the uh, family <laughs> down the street from their garden. And okay. she would bring all that to work with her. And um, again, just to go back to that family environment. And yeah. uh, she was kind of the uh, the patriarch in that sense for us. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, you know, I, I was wondering, I just have a few minutes left, but Alex, how, how do you feel about kind of the moral dilemma that's going on in this story? You know, I... I it, it's hard to to watch something like this to have a little girl uh, treated this way. You know, she's she's not allowed to really be a kid. She's kind of a savior. How do you feel about that? Um, I definitely think that there is some changes that needed to be made in that community for Isla. And that is kind of hard to think about. But I mean, she still got an amazing life and she was still treated so kindly by all of her friends and yeah. most of her family <laughs> um but I mean like I usually say I love doing all of these dramatic and hard pieces but yeah. there is always something that I go Oh. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, you wouldn't be human if you didn't kind of feel sorry for her. There's no question. And Clayton, what do, what do you think? I mean, because again, you're, you play this guy who's the mayor. So not as he just, it, it's his daughter, but you're also thinking of the community because you've got that responsibility too. Um, talk about a moral and major dilemma. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think there was certainly that tug of war as it relates to his responsibilities to the community and 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 to his mother and mother-in-law, you know, and, and kind of the, the empathy that goes with that as well. But, you know, for me, when I read this material, I knew that the scenes were going to kind of dictate those moments. So I wanted to be sure that, and, and with Christian's help and guidance throughout that process, I just wanted to make sure that the through line was love. And, and unconditional love for this child and and not necessarily reflecting as, as much on her gifts, but the gift that she was to me just as a child and allowing me the opportunity to be a father, yeah. right? So I was able to kind of bring my own experience of being a dad and how, you know, how, um, you know, it's the greatest thing I've ever done, right? And you, and you don't realize it until you get kids. Um, so I, I think, and I've said this before, Alex having such a wonderful relationship with her parents and 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 me having a, a great relationship with my children, I was able to kind of incorporate that into this story. So uh, to answer your question, you know, I tried not to play mm -hmm. those moments uh, of being a mayor and 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 a husband and and more so on uh, my responsibility as a father. Yeah, yeah, it really shows through. Um, you guys did, like I said, I love this movie. I thought you both did such an amazing job. Everybody did. It was beautiful to watch. Everything about it is beautiful. So congratulations on it. Plain, do more Canadian movies. Now you've got the bug that's bitten you. So we want you back here in Canada. <laughs> Alex, I'm going to be seeing you for another 100 years making movies. I'm <laughs> sure you're amazing. Uh, have a really great time at your premiere tonight. I'm telling you, bring Kleenex because you're going to get quite the reception. So congratulations. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Okay, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good one.